Good. All right. So um, today we're here to talk about the evolution of, of glue lamp, high performance, cost conscious structural design. Um, Cynthia already went through much of the information about the presentation as an AIA approved presentation and the credits you'll receive. Um, so that being said, I'm just going to give you a minute to read over the course description here. Um, as you can see, we're asking you to rethink Glulam in this presentation. So what our objective here in the presentation is, is we want to help you understand the evolution of glue lamb beams, specifically as it relates to their, their manufacturing and their versatility to help you improve your ability to evaluate and understand the value of utilizing a 24F 1.8E glue lamb or that design criteria as a basis to facilitate greater field construction options for the projects you're designing. We also want to go through and evaluate the breadth of engineered wood product combinations available for design and specification in single family residential and multifamily wood construction projects. And then we want to better help you better specify and understand non brand specific engineered wood product systems for wood construction with a greater consciousness of, of total cost and materials, uh, total cost of materials. And we want you to acquire insight into the wood beam product manufacturing capacity in North America um, so you can understand why there's a need for a broader engineered wood product system specification uh, with an eye for value that includes glue lamp. Oftentimes, glue lamp is the engineered wood product that's that's left out. So we want you to rethink glue lamb to bring it in to your specification mix. So let's let's just talk about glue lamb a little bit in general. You know, you know, we're here to talk about where glue lamb is going, but let's talk about where it's been first. Um, so let's go over the origins of the product and talk a little bit about what makes a stock glue lamb a stock glue lamb versus a custom glue lamb and how various manufacturing methods yield some very important differences in the end product. When you get right down to it, that's what we're here to talk about is the raw material and the manufacturing of the raw material that goes into the glue lamb that makes it the uh, product you guys are all used to seeing on projects. Glue lamb is without a doubt the original engineered wood product. So the first industrial glue lamp plant patent is dated all the way back in 1906 in Germany by a, a gentleman named Otto Hetzer. Glue lamp technology arrived in the US in the 1930s by way of Wisconsin. So glue lamp is something that's been around for, for a long time and has a great track record of utility and working. Um, many projects that were built back in the early 1900s are, are still standing and still utilized today, as you can see by the photo of uh, this dome at the University of Zurich. And this was built using Hetzer's glue lamb manufacturing system in 1911. So Based on glue lamb's history, it's safe to say, you know, glue lamb beams are the original engineered wood product. For many years, glue lambs were produced with very little change in the process used to manufacture the product. But as you'll see in the you know, next few slides, recent improvements, you know, recent meaning within the last 10 years or so, um, manufacturing of glue lamb beams has improved greatly. It's improved the strength of the product, it's improved the versatility of the product, and it's also improved the cost effectiveness of the product. So that's why we ask you to rethink Glulam. 
So glue lamp falls into the engineered wood products category by virtue of it being a manufactured product. And it's derived from a combination of binding or fixing laminations of wood together with, it, with an adhesive to form a product that's longer, straighter, stronger than what have, would have been available without manufacturing. Sounds real similar to other products you might be familiar with, like LBL, LSL, iJoist, PSL. And that's true. They all fall within the same category, EWP, engineered wood products. Um, the laminations or lamb stock are glued at the ends with finger joints. And that's what, that's what enables the, the product to be long. Then those long lengths are glued together on the face into plies that provides the depth of the product. So the versatility of a glue lamp beam is derived from the quality of the lamp stock that goes into the manufacturing. And that's really the key thing, the principal thing we wanna talk about today is lamp stock differentiates one glue lamp beam from another. So um, because of the nature of glue lamp manufacturing, one of the benefits glue lamp offers in comparison to other EWP products is that Manufacturers are, are able to balance the layup, that mix, that recipe of lamination stock to create a bean that fits any end use application. Um, this allows manufacturers to be really efficient with raw material resource utilization by putting only the high strength laminations where they need to go. And what that means to you as specifiers, designers, architects, engineers, designing projects is that glue lamb offers a, a level of cost effectiveness and versatility that most other um, engineered wood products do not. So typically glue lambs fall into two categories. There's a stock category and a custom category. So let's define that while we're getting started here. So stock glue lambs fall under the designation of 24F V4 glue lambs, also known as 24F 1.8E. And they're manufactured to be highly cost effective without jeopardizing strength or uh, without jeopardizing strength and being readily available in local markets through distribution, hence the term stock. Typically stock beams are manufactured in either 48 or 60 foot lengths, in some cases even longer, to facilitate delivery into local markets to be kept in an inventory of distribution centers. Um, they're manufactured in widths typically starting at about two and a half inches and will go all the way up to 10 and three quarter inches wide. Um, and the depth comes from laminations of either inch and three eighths uh, lamb stock or inch and a half thick lamb stock, depending on the species being used. Now in the East, the wood basket is primarily Southern yellow pine. So in the Eastern United States, you're gonna see a lot of inch and three eighths lamb stock, whereas in the West, where Doug fir is more prominent, you're gonna see uh, inch and a half laminations. Now these beams are intended for use across the myriad of applications uh, of wood construction, including applications compatible with engineered wood eye joist. That's a relatively new thing and that's why we ask you to rethink glue lamp. So, the previous slide begs the question, you know, what's the difference, the real difference between a stock glue lamp and a custom or special order glue lamp? And what makes a custom beam custom? Um, I'll answer the second question first. What makes a custom beam custom? The short answer is anything that is not architectural grade 24F V4 is considered a custom beam by most, if not all glue lamp manufacturers. Um, that does include 24F V8 beams, arch beams, any layup that isn't 24F V4 and finished to an architectural appearance grade. Um, as you can see by the images on the screen, there's very little difference between a 24F V4 stock beam, which is unbalanced, and a 24F V8 beam, which is balanced. Now, I understand balanced versus unbalanced is you know, a pretty big difference. However, the only real difference between the two um, is the amount of high grade tension lamb stock that goes into the beam, allowing it to be balanced or a symmetrical layup, uh, eliminating a designation of top or bottom. But what that does is increase cost and lead time. So while you might have a beam that is interchangeable over 
uh, a multi-span condition or in a cantilever as it relates to the orientation of a top lamination, what you end up with is more lead time and you know 25 to 30 percent higher cost. Now, what designates a stock beam as such is that the grade uh, glue lamp manufacturers produce in the in the highest value in the highest volume and sell into markets to be kept as inventory or stock items. So, for glue lamp manufacturers, the 24F V4 layup offers the most efficient use of wood fiber across the widest cross section of lamp lamp stock grades, which enables them which enables glue lamp manufacturers to produce these beams in, in high volume for local inventories at a highly competitive price in the market. So the takeaway from this is, again, rethink how you're looking at glue lamp. Unbalanced stock beams are super versatile, super cost effective, and also very strong. Balanced V8 beams or custom stock or custom beams or special order beams, the big difference between the two as you look at the slide is that you've got more high tension lamp stock in both the top and bottom. So really what's, what's important to understand about glue lamp beams is so much of it depends on the lamp stock that goes into the beam, the quality of the lamp stock that goes into the beam itself. And the lamp stock grading process consists of multiple steps, you know, re regardless of the, the width of product. Um, it's typical for lamp stock to be visually graded by a certified grader as well as mechanically graded. An, auto, an automated process completed by uh, mechanical stress rating equipment, MSR equipment, to measure the modulus of elasticity, of, among other design specs. Lamp stock is also kiln dried uh, down to less than 16%. So typically when a beam comes to market, it's already dried in the manufacturing process. The lamp stock is already dried. And then as the beam um, uh, gets used to its existing environment, it usually dries down to around 12 to 14%, which provides a very stable product. So, you know, not all lamp stock manufacturing is the same. And, and that's really an important component of the rethink glue lamp premise. So, um, the lamp stock manufacturing process can be very automated, as, as you can see here. I mean, you know, you look, you look at these images and you barely see a person. Um, and this becomes important when, when manufacturing stock beams in high volumes. But not all glue lamp manufacturers manufacture their own lamp stock. And that's really an important component of having a good understanding of glue lamp beams. For those manufacturers that do not, manufacture their own lamp stock. It's typical for them to buy lamp stock from third party producers on the open market. You know, the same way you might buy stud grade lumber or number two and better lumber. For mills that are typically tooled to produce lamp stock products in stud dimensions. So you, you might wonder why, you know, why do, why over the years have glue lamp beams never corresponded to the width of framing? Why have they never corresponded to the width uh, or the depth of, of eye joys? Most of that has to do with the procurement of, of lamp stock in that it was being produced by stud manufacturers or, or mills that were also producing stud size material. So the lamp stock that was coming out of those facilities uh, was, was three and a half inches or five and a half inches. Um, for, for glue lamp manufacturers that are buying their lamp stock from those types of producers, their end product finishes scant of stud material. So three and an eighth and five and an eighth inches wide, um, which forces the you forces additional, uh, material and labor to be used with those, those products, which end up driving the cost up. Now, not all glue lamp manufacturers are producing their beams out of lamp stock that's scant or slightly narrower than uh, stud material. Um, glue lamp manufacturers that, that process their own lamp stock produce raw material that's slightly wider than two by four and two by six, enabling the manufacture of those stock finished products 
to produce a product that matches the width of the framing material, alleviating the need for additional time and material to complete the installation, uh, as well as meets architectural grade standards. So, I mean, that's, that's really a big deal, like a really big shift in the world of blue land manufacturing. And it's important to you as designers and specifiers because it enables you to specify product that fits in the spaces that the, the framing material allows without the need for additional time, material, and labor. So uh, the origin of glue lamp beams that finish narrower than the framing members they are coupled with is it's the lamp stock manufacturing that was the cause of that. For 75 years, and in some cases still today, uh, lamp stock is produced to match the width of standard stud material, two by four and two by six. So, you know, three and a half and five and a half inches wide. After the lamp stock uh, from these mills is uh, stacked and pressed into beams, those beams need to be cleaned up or sanded to, you know, smooth out any offset between laminations to meet an architectural grade. Um, because these beams are being produced at facilities that uh, are using third-party lamp stock that's in stud dimension, when they finish those beams, sand them down uh, or plane them down to smooth them out, they end up with a beam that's three and an eighth and five and an eighth inches wide. Why? Because they're starting with material that is only three and a half and five and a half inches wide to start. So they have to sand it down to get a finished product. And this is where the, the cause for that additional time and material comes from. So the best way to make sure your projects see glue lambs that match the width of the framing um, is to specify three and a half and five and a half inch wide glue lambs on the, the, the documents. So lamb stock grading is uh, somewhat universal. I mean, you know, despite the differences in finished product width uh, of stock beams, all glue lamb manufacturers utilize the same three lamb stock grades to produce their products. You know, as you can see, the, the size of the knot in the lamb stock as a percentage of width is really the most important factor in lamb stock grading. Because many glue lamb manufacturers are, are producing stock beams in architectural grade as a primary production product, the, the knot structure of the lamp stock going into the beam makes a big difference in strength of beam and visual appearance of the beam. Um, while there are no restrictions on the number of visible knots in an architectural grade beam, uh, the grade does restrict the size of open knots allowed in the beam. So voids larger than three quarters of an inch must be filled, hence the manufacturer's desire to have as few voids larger than three quarters of an inch visible on the outside of the beam. So as, as previously mentioned, one benefit glue lamb beam manufacturing offers is the ability to modify the material layout to manage cost and essentially fit any end use needed. So, you know, obviously the more high grade material that goes into a beam, the more the beam is going to cost. So inevitably, the question of, of uh, what is camber and how much should I expect in a 24V4 stock beam comes up. Um, as you can see here, uh, an unbalanced beam typically used in simple spans and very cost effective because it, because it utilizes uh, less high grade material does ha have some camber, some, but very little. However, you know, the built in camber is minimal enough to be considered zero camber on short spans and stock beams. While balanced beams are more likely to be used in multi-span conditions and are built to be loaded in tension on either side of the beam, requiring the use of more high grade strength lamination, um, that isn't to say an unbalanced beam cannot be used in multi-span conditions or in cantilever conditions, despite the camber present. If an unbalanced beam is used in a multi-span condition, it's up to the structural engineer to design using the compression value for tension, 1,850 PSI, uh, instead of the 2,400 PSI the unbalanced beam offers in tension. So 
So blue lamb appearance options, as, as we mentioned, you know, there's uh, architectural grade is probably the, is, is, is fair to say is the baseline um, visual appearance grade that stock beams are being manufactured in. And you can see uh, on this slide, the, the differences between the different grades. Now, what's important to point out here that uh, framing grade and industrial grade, while those, uh, those grades do offer some cost savings because the, the beams aren't cleaned up as much and um, the allowance for uh, voids and wane and knots is uh, more liberal, those beams do come with more lead time. So those framing and industrial grade beams are not beams that are gonna be kept on the ground in, in your local market. And the same holds true for premium grade beams. Now, premium grade beams are um, a step above architectural grade in visual appearance. And that comes with additional cost and lead time. So one of the things that oftentimes comes up with architectural grade beams is that there's a, a, a misunderstanding of what an architectural grade beam is as it relates to appearance. Now, the, I think the best way to describe it is architectural grade is the, is the entry point to visual appearance grade. It's not um, the highest end. Now, depending on the manufacturer, um, everybody is gonna produce an architectural grade beam. When you get above those grades, where you get into premium and even grades above premium, premium hand select, hand select, et cetera, um, those grades are gonna differ slightly from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer. But architectural grade is one that you, you can rest assured is, is pretty universal across all manufacturers. So the glue lamb manufacturing process, you know, uh, for glue lamb manufacturers that utilize narrow lamb stock produced in dimensions that, you know, when the lamb stock comes to the plant in three and a half and five and a half inches wide, the manufacturing process is the same as those that utilize wider lamb stock, frankly. Um, the biggest difference is the dimension of the finished product. Um, one corresponds to the dimensions of all the other structural products being used in the structural frame, while the other comes to market slightly narrower than the material used in the structural frame, hence the need for um, scabbing on uh, additional either sheathing product or OSB or plywood to make the beam flush to the open. But as you can see here, um, you know, Lamp stock is coming in to be finger jointed to, to uh, increase length. Those laminations are slightly planed, adhesive is added, the pressing and curing process happens. And right here in the planing and finishing of members, that's really the big difference maker is when you start with um, lamp stock that's in dimensions of uh, a stud and three and a half and five and a half inches wide, it gets planed down to three and an eighth and five and an eighth inches before it's packaged and sent out to market. But the, the product, you know, as it relates to uh, the layup of the laminations to create the stock beam, essentially is the same. So you still have 2400 PSI intention, 1850 PSI in compression. You can see the, the layup using all three grades of, of lamb stock, and that it's an unbalanced beam. So what, what happened? Why, why all of a sudden was there a push to move away from um, a beam that had been around for you know, roughly 100 years? Well, it, it's because of the laminations. You know, glue, lambs, glue lamb beams were seen to be out of date according to a market analysis completed by the APA in 2008. You know, by the time this report was completed, engineered wood products like PSL and LVL and even LSL had, had already entered into and started to take a very dominant role in the structural frame market and gained significant market share through specification, despite having higher costs than 24FV4 glue lamp. Um, so for many in the, in the wood construction industry, their primary complaint about 24FV4 uh, glue lamp beams was that they didn't fit flush with both sides of the framing material that they were intended to interface with, causing issues with installation 
and additional costs due to the need for additional material and callbacks. Uh, and they weren't compatible with iJoyce in depth and in FleshBeam applications. So in addition, they didn't meet the minimum bearing requirements to be used as a drop beam beneath iJoyce at midspan. So as a reaction to the report, glue lamb manufacturers that had control over the production of their own lamb stock development got to work at redesigning their stock glue lamb product, working backwards from the finished product to the log from which the lamb stock was being produced. Their conclusion was that the development of wider lamb stock that would enable a fully compatible finished product would offer the market more cost-effective and versatile structural beam options that improve yield at the mill, thereby reducing waste. Another bonus of this analysis was the conclusion that beams produced from wider lamb stock would not drive the cost of manufacturing up enabling manufacturers to go to market with an improved glue lamb product whose market price was not affected. And that's really a, a big part of the rethink glue lamb uh, proposal. So this image displays the process of an integrated glue lamb production plant. The biggest difference you'll see here in the production process is while it looks more complicated than the example previously displayed, the only real difference is the addition of an integrated lamb stock production facility that starts with the purchase of logs from sustainable forests that get turned into slightly wider lamb stock that feeds glue lamb the glue lamb production facility, enabling the production of glue lamb beams that are compatible with not only framing material, the framing material it interfaces with, but in depth so that you can use glue lamb's uh, flush with engineered wood eye joist. Another benefit that this offers is um, use of standard structural hangers uh, is improved. Um, hanger manufacturers are producing three and a half and five and a half inch wide hangers, you know, all day, every day, and those dimensions are the most cost-effective hanger option and they're also the hangers that are most readily available in in the markets you guys are in um, so for manufacturers that are producing their own lamb stock you know the lamb stock material that does not meet the grading requirement can also be moved off to a stud mill and turned into stud because there's or other material because there's still enough um, there's still enough uh, wood fiber there for that material to be trimmed down into an additional merchantable product. And what you get when you start out with a wider lamb stock is this. So you can see right here the dimensions three and a half and five and a half inches wide, you know, a product that fits into the cavity uh, enabled by the framing material. Um, no additional need for um, scabbing on plywood or OSB to make it flush, the cost of nails goes away, the time associated with the labor goes away, the time associated with the additional cutting goes away. And you can see the design values are the same. So in tension, there's still 2400 PSI, and in compression, there's still 1850 PSI. Now, what that doesn't take into account is the additional wood fiber. So Typically, well, not typically, in actuality, a framing width glue lamb beam, so a beam that finishes at three and a half and five and a half inches wide, is going to be seven to 12 percent uh, stronger than one that finishes at three and an eighth or five and an eighth, just by virtue of the additional wood fiber. So in this slide, what we're, we're displaying here is that, you know, when you specify a full framing width beam, you provide uh, an option to the market that facilitates greater efficiency of construction. So, you know, the, the typical um, installation process when utilizing narrower beams or multiple plies of, of LVL consists of quite a bit of cutting, quite a bit of assembly, 
And all of this happens in the field, which um, for better or worse, usually for worse, adds additional cost and time to the, the framing, the construction process. So the beam on the left is the uh, installation process associated with using narrow beams. The installation process displayed on the right exhibits you know, a single cut and install uh, installation process that uh, facilitates greater efficiency and lower cost. So comparative design values, right? You know, really what we're talking about here is, is strength. So that being said, let's take a look at how the design values of a 24FV4 glue lamp compared, compared to LBL. So it's important to point out here that we're not choosing a comparison between glue lamp and LVL to pick on LVL, you know, but LVL's design values are what's typically referenced in structural general notes and beam and header schedules as standard minimums, let's say, preventing the market from taking advantage of the versatility and cost effectiveness stock glue lamp manufactured, stock glue lamp manufactured in wider length offers. So as you can see here, in tension, a 24FV4 glue lamp beam is within 8% of LVO. Now let's move down to shear. Here we can see merely a 7% difference between the two. Modulus of elasticity, roughly 5% difference. You know, there's a big leap when comparing compression perpendicular to grain, but you know, neither product is, is used in a plate application, typically um, all that often, if ever. And compression perpendicular to grain is almost never a determining factor when sizing a, a beam or a header being used to you know, bridge, bridge a gap between uh, two structural supports. So based on these facts, it's curious why more engineers don't utilize the design values of 24FV4 glue lamp as their base design value, specifically because of the, the cost effectiveness glue lamp offers. So here's another way of looking at comparative design values. So let's take a moment to compare uh, LVL and glue lamb by allowable reaction on beams when the two products are applied to the same length span with identical loads. In this slide, you can see how close the two compare in live load and total load allowable reaction. In most every case, the glue lamb is within roughly 100 pounds of an LVL of the same section size. Now, just to make this a little bit easier to read, um, I went ahead and did this so we could just highlight highlight a few. So you can see here, you know, when we're dealing with a uh, an eight foot span, you know, you can see that in an 11 7 8 inch depth, um, the glue lamb is, you know, roughly within 100 pounds. As we move into larger section sizes, that uh, that gap narrows considerably. As you can see here, here, and here. So here's, here's another way to, to look at it. Um, these are some standard LVL design values and a 24FV4 design value. Now you can see I, I've, I've put an asterisk by the 24FV4 design values. Now, all design values for glue lamb are going to correlate to 24FV4, which is 2,400 pounds in tension, 1,850 in compression, and a modulus of elasticity of 1.8 E. Now, what's important to point out here is that a full framing with glue lamb beam is going to be 7 to 12 percent stronger than the design values that are called out in that uh, 24F V4 chart because of the additional wood fiber that they provide. So when you start to compare uh, glue lamb design values to LVL design values, you can see how, how close the two really are. Oftentimes what we find, almost every time, nine out of ten times what we find is that uh, you can replace more costly LVL with a more cost of glue cost effective glue lamb beam in the same section size. So 
So now let's take it one step further by taking a look at some of the cost advantages offered by stock glue lamb beams in comparison to other beam technologies often used in the same applications. Generally speaking, there are a number of misconceptions here. As you can see by the, um, this, as you can see by the uh, slide, stock glue lamb offers a cost advantage in comparison to other engineered wood products. However, the opposite is generally believed to be true in the market. You know, much of that misconception comes from the, the market associating the cost of a custom V8 beam as the general cost of glue lamb beam. And again, getting back to the theme of the presentation, we're asking you to rethink glue lamb based on the, the dimensions the product comes in, the uh, efficiency of installation, the versatility of the product now that it can be used, now that it's manufactured in depths that match engineered wood eye joists, so it's available to be used as a flush beam. And finally, cost effectiveness. As you look through this natural progression for specifying residential beams based on cost, you can see that short of solid sawn beams, glue lamb is the, the next best option as it relates to cost. And then when you start to compare the cost and the strength together, that's what creates value. So, you know, at, at present, all engineered wood product manufacturers are producing long, strong, straight, predictable wood products. So, so how do you as a design professional leverage the best combination of engineered wood products to balance economy and performance to offer your clients the opportunity to take advantage of the value various combinations of these products offer? You know, the, the simple answer is through specification, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's driven from the architect or from the engineer, um, you know, by utilizing a baseline design value standard that reflects the values of 24FV4 glue lamp, you open up the door to virtually every structural engineered wood product currently being produced in the market today without jeopardizing health and human safety. So, you know, for years, there was always a belief that, well, if I use uh, eye joist, I have to use LVL with it. Or if I use glue lamp, I only use that in an exposed application. Um, and I can't use eye joist with it. Well, that's all changed now because of the um, improved lamp stock manufacturing that's in the market now. Again, getting along, getting back to the theme of rethink glue lamp, because lamp stock is manufactured in wider widths, it's enabling glue lamp beams to be manufactured in sizes that just make sense and are compatible with all of the other engineered wood products that are in the market today. So let's move away from um, 24FV4 stock glue lamb beams for just a, a minute here, and let's talk about uh, high strength glue lamb. Um, typically, these glue lambs are manufactured in accordance with the 30F 2.1E stress class, and they offer greater capacity uh, along with some other differences from their 24FV4 counterparts, and we'll talk about that now. So, um, the manufacturing process associated with these beams is, is similar to what we went over previously with 24FV4 beams. However, there are some major differences in the makeup of the beam that should be mentioned to assure accurate specification. Right off the bat, one of the first differences you'll notice about these beams is that they utilize LVL for the top and bottom lamination, giving the product a balanced layup, meaning the grades of lamination that make up the beam are the same on both sides symmetrical. So there is no top and bottom. What's more, um, the grade of lamp stock that make up this beam is mostly high grade. So the combination of those two characteristics is what enables this product to achieve a very, very high design value. Because these beams are manufactured to frame and grade, they are manufactured in widths that match framing material in width and depths that match eye joists making them ideal for high stress wall, floor, and roof framing applications. The species of laminations that make up this product 
just like 24FV4 beams, are either going to be southern yellow pine or dug fir. Um, these beams are manufactured in long lengths, and they're readily available. I mean, they're even stocked in some markets, um, but in other markets, there, there may be a little bit of lead time. But what they do offer is a more cost-effective alternative to many of the other high-strength products that are out there in the market, like PSL, um, that oftentimes gets uh, specified in uh, applications where a very high-strength beam is needed, but it's a much higher cost beam than high strength hybrid glue in. So let's just take a look at the, the design values for a moment in comparison. So as you can see here, um, in almost every case, the um, design values of high strength glue lamb exceed those of uh, PSL, which is considered to be the highest strength uh, engineered wood product in the market. Now keep in mind that formula we talked about earlier, you know, strength plus cost equals value. So for the next few slides, we'll just take a, um, a look at some of the applications that Glulam is typically used in and, and overlooked in. So here are some typical use applications for glue lamb, you know, drop beams because glue lambs do look good uh, in exposed applications. They will span long distances, carry heavy loads. You can penetrate them both horizontally and vertically. So they become really popular in this application. Garage door headers, um, because of the um, their ability to transfer load uh, through small spaces. Uh, glue lamp beams have become really popular uh, in garage door header applications because they do a great job of transferring lateral load um, through, through a system without um, using mechanical fasteners as opposed to prefab shear walls. This is just another option, another example of, of portal frame using uh, glue lamb as a header. Again, very common, very popular. Now let's let's look at some applications where glue lamb is, is typically overlooked. Again, this is where we ask you to you know, rethink glue lamb. So in eye joist applications, as you can see here, glue lamb now is available in full framing width and depths that match eye joist, making this uh, application a viable cost-effective alternative to uh, LVL as the flush beam. Again, used as a flush beam in EWP systems. As you can see here, you've got you know, flush beams carrying eye joist here and here. You've got drop beams carrying eye joist at mid-span, and then glue lambs used here as a rim around a stairwell opening. Now, these are all applications of concealed beams that would have typically been specified as uh, LVL in most cases. However, due to the manufacturing changes that are now making full framing with eye joist compatible depth, glue lamb a more cost-effective alternative to LVL, this is a uh, uh, specification that builders tend to like because it helps them reduce cost in EWP systems. So here's a um, look at utilizing a high strength glue lamb beam flush with eye joists. Now, one of the benefits high strength eye joists or high strength glue lamb beam, that hybrid glue lamb beam that utilizes LVL on the top and bottom offers is when you've got eye joists with very long spans or trusses with very long spans with lots of reaction at the end, that high strength glue lamb, that hybrid glue lamb that 30F 2.1 E product does a great job of cost effectively transferring that load out to bearing points, as you can see here. And again, utilizing uh, full framing width glue lamb beams as a bearing at mid span is now a viable option. Previously, when all glue lamb beams were manufactured using narrow lamb stock to dimensions of three and an eighth or five or three and an eighth inches wide, 
you couldn't use them as bearing at mid-span because they didn't meet the minimum bearing requirement called out by iJoyce manufacturers. So you were forced to use either multiple plies of, of LVL here or some other product, uh, driving the cost of that uh, system up. This is one of the most uh, frequently overlooked applications that Glulam offers, especially with the manufacturing of full, full width Glulams is in short span header applications that demand uh, more than a two by or that um, demand a level of framing that uh, is more efficient. So multifamily as is an example that comes to mind. So, you know, the idea of field assembly of multiple plies of two by with flitch plates, et cetera, um, causes framers to uh, lose a lot of time and material based on the uh, field assembly process. And the, the same holds true for LVL used in these applications. The field assembly process is what takes up time and money. When you can use a full framing width header, you reduce callbacks, you get a better load transfer, and it's a more cost-effective option. Another thing to keep in mind is that there's multiple uh, grades of full framing with glue lamb beam that can be used in this application. Uh, it doesn't have to be 24 FV4. Um, there can be a 1.6E that would work fine in this, this application. And it doesn't have to be frame, uh, architectural grade. It can be a, a lower grade than architectural grade because it's a concealed application. But it all comes down to the specification of, of glue lamb in these applications. So full framing with glue lamb is the most cost effective uh, engineered wood header there is on the market, bar none. And when specifying it in multifamily applications, you know, just because of the scale of those products, the economy that glue lamb offers presents real, a real ability to, to, to cut costs without, uh, again, jeopardizing uh, health and human safety. Another overlooked application that glue lamb provides is treating dug fur glue lambs with uh, high clear two. So typically in an application like this, you might specify an Alaskan yellow cedar beam or a Port Orford cedar beam. Whereas those, those species typically are uh, very um, um, bipolar as it relates to availability and cost. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Uh, sometimes the cost is real high, sometimes it's not, and that can change very quickly. Uh, preservative treated dug fur beams with high clear two make a great alternative to uh, Alaskan yellow cedar and Port Orford cedar, and they provide a much higher strength. So as you can see here, the design values for a treated dug fur beam uh, is greater than both Port Orford and Alaskan yellow cedar. Another expanded glue lamb beam application is the use of uh, glue lamb columns in tall wall applications as framing members. Now, previously, this made no sense at all when a column was three and based on three and an eighth or five and an eighth inch wide lamb stock. But now that we're able to produce glue lamb in dimensions that make sense and correspond to framing, you've increased the um, number of products you have available to specify in, in uh, tall wall applications. So glue lamb really provides a level of versatility, strength, and economy that begs the question, why aren't we rethinking glue lamb? So finally, let's talk about whether or not custom beams are, are required. As you could see earlier in the presentation, you had uh, the only difference between a custom beam and a stock beam is the balanced layout, as you can see here. So essentially, the, the amount of high tension lamp stock material that goes into this V8 beam versus the amount of, of uh, high grade lamp stock that material that goes into this V4 beam, this is what drives the cost. The lamp stock material and um, the labor that goes into it. So as you'll see, the biggest difference, the only difference really is 
in the compression perpendicular or the, the compression bending value in a V4 versus a V8. You're talking about roughly 23%. Every other, every other design property is the same. And typically it's the E value that drives uh, spec that drives whether or not a beam will work in wood frame construction. And the E value is the same in both of those problems. The other thing that specifying stock beam provides is it alleviates uh, potential slowdowns in construction because it's very common for lead times to stretch out to six weeks uh, for custom balanced glue lamp. So as you can see here, this is the, the you know, typically folks will specify a, a V8 glue lamb when dealing with multi-span or cantilever conditions, and they'll, they'll specify a stock or V4 glue lamb when dealing with a simple span. But again, in the interest of rethinking glue lamb, full framing with glue lamb beams have 7 to 12% greater capacity than their standard uh, narrower section glue lamb. So in applications like cantilever and multi-span condition, you've got a stronger product to put in. So um, camber is usually another uh, option that is specified or specified that drives um, whether or not a beam is stock or special order. Now keep in mind, stock beams do have camber. So the question becomes, is there enough camber to meet the needs of your uh, application. So industry tolerance is a quarter inch up to 20 feet and it in increases by an eighth inch per additional 20 feet. So a 24 foot beam would have a tolerance of plus or minus three eighths of an inch of camber. That meets the zero, that meets the zero camber qualification up to 30 feet. So oftentimes you don't need to specify it in because it's already there. So Standard camber is uh, 5, 000, is based on a 5,000 foot radius on a, uh, a stock beam. So a beam with 22 foot of span based on a 5,000 foot radius would only have an eighth inch of camber. A beam with 30 foot would only have a quarter inch of camber. So that's, that's better than zero camber because there is some camber built in to control the dead load that is going to be on that beam and it meets the zero camber tolerance on short spans. So another, another point about the difference between stock and special order beams is the amount of labor that goes into each. So as you could see in the previous slide, the uh, stock beam manufacturing is, is far more automated and efficient. Special order beam manufacturing, as you can see here, is fraught with, with labor and time because you can see most of the manufacturing process is done by hand. So when we ask you to rethink glue lamb, we ask you to rethink it in the form of your specification by including full framing width glue lamb in iJoyce compatible depths or standard depths as part of your structural design specification right next to the, uh, the LVL and the LSL and PSL that you may already be specifying. As you can see here, whoops, um, you know, glue lamb does cover the greatest, uh, the greatest range of products. So right now in the market, there's various grades of LVL and various grades of LSL that, you know, work in certain applications. Um, but when you specify in standard 24V4 full framing width uh, glue lamp beam at 2400 1.8E, it covers a, a massive section of this mid-strength category that, for the most part, wood frame construction falls within, whether it's single family or multifamily. So... By now, hopefully you guys understand the evolution of uh, glue lamb manufacturing as a means to you know, evaluate how and where you're specifying um, product, have an understanding of how glue lamb beams fall within the uh, total scope of engineered wood product combinations, and uh, have a better understanding of how glue lamb works in non-brand specific 
uh, engineered wood product systems for wood construction and understand that glue lamb beam is really the most cost effective option uh, when you're looking at um, structural specification. You know, and hopefully you have a better insight into uh, the wood beam manufacturing process. So you have a greater understanding of, of why uh, it's important to uh, widen the breadth of um, products available in your EWP specification. 